The universe as we understand it is approximately 13.8 billion years old. But was that truly the beginning? Is that its actual age? This age is derived from what we refer to as the start of the hot big bang, the birth of our universe. But why do we decide that this moment is the beginning? To understand this better, let's compare it to the curtain rising in a play. Before the curtain lifts, there's a lot happening backstage. In the context of the universe, this backstage is a period we refer to as cosmic inflation. But the audience in the theater only gets to see the play from the moment the curtain rises, not what happens before. Similarly, the start of the hot big bang is the earliest moment we can be certain about, the moment the curtain rises in the universe. So when we talk about the age of the universe, we're really talking about the time elapsed since the fiery birth of the Big Bang. The age of the universe is not just a number. It's a testament to our journey through time, a marker of where we've come from, and perhaps a hint of where we're headed. This is a video about how we know our universe is 13.8 billion years old. Imagine a day that didn't have yesterday. On this day, everything we see and everything we know, including us, came into existence from a super tiny point called a singularity. This is what the hot Big Bang theory tells us about how the universe started. It's not just a scientific theory, but a story about our universe. It helps us comprehend our origins in the grand scheme of the universe. This theory is both controversial and captivating. It suggests that our universe had a definitive starting point. This concept is so profound that it aligns with the narratives of various religious texts, leading some to reject it outright. In the modern context of cosmic inflation, the Big Bang might not be the starting point. Some argue that it's merely the aftermath of a previous epoch. It's another twist in the tale that adds another layer of complexity to our understanding of the universe. So, let's explore the origins of our universe, questioning the known and venturing into the unknown. After all, every great story begins with a Big Bang. When we ask a cosmologist or astrophysicist, how old is our universe? We always get the same answer. Approximately 13.8 billion years. But why is this figure so consistent? The answer lies in the cosmic microwave background radiation, the oldest light in our universe. This light was released 380,000 years after the Big Bang, a time when the universe cooled enough for atoms to form and photons to travel freely. This moment, often referred to as the era of recombination, marks the birth of the universe as we know it. But why do we say the universe is 13.8 billion years old, yet we start counting from 380,000 years after the Big Bang? While the universe became visible to us 380,000 years after the Big Bang, its true age extends back to that initial singularity. There are two main strategies we use to determine how old our universe truly is. 1. The oldest known objects. We look for the oldest things we can find and measure their ages. This gives us a minimum age for the universe because it can't be younger than its oldest inhabitants. It's like finding an ancient artifact and knowing that human history must stretch back at least as far as that artifact's creation. The Cosmic Blueprint. We use our understanding of the universe's blueprint general relativity, and our knowledge of its composition and expansion rate to calculate the time elapsed since the hot Big Bang. This is like using architectural plans and the rate at which a building deteriorates to estimate when it was built. The first method is more of a sanity check. It ensures our theories don't produce a universe younger than the objects within it. As our understanding of cosmology and astrophysics has grown from the roots of astronomy and physics, we've become adept at determining the ages of stars and galaxies the ancient sentinels of the cosmos. As we gaze up at the night sky, we're not just looking at a tapestry of stars, we're looking at cosmic time capsules, each one a clue to the age and history of our incredible universe. Stars are born from clouds of gas collapsing under their own gravity, blossoming into a myriad of sizes, colors, temperatures, and masses. The largest, bluest, and most massive among them hold the greatest amounts of nuclear fuel. Yet, paradoxically, these stellar giants have the shortest lifespans. Why? The answer lies in the heart of a star, where nuclear fusion occurs. Uh, this process only happens when temperatures exceed 4 million Kelvin. The hotter it gets, the faster the fusion. So, these massive stars, despite their abundant fuel, burn brightly and exhaust their reserves swiftly. 
Massive stars do indeed have the most fuel, but they burn through it quickly because of the intense heat and pressure in their cores. This leads to a shorter lifespan compared to smaller stars. As for determining the age of a collection of stars, the best method is to gaze at globular clusters. Globular clusters are groups of stars that were all born at the same time. By studying the stars in these clusters that are still shining, we can confidently estimate that the age of the universe must be at least 12.5 to 13.0 billion years old. By applying the laws of physics, such as general relativity, to the expanding universe, we arrive at the Friedman equations. These equations weave a tale of cosmic expansion, linking the universe's past and present, and revealing the energy forms within it. When we gather the best data available, including the cosmic microwave background and large-scale clustering data, we uncover our cosmic history. We find a universe composed of 68% dark energy, 27% dark matter, 4.9% normal matter, 0.1% neutrinos, 0.01% photons, and not much else. We also know that the universe is expanding at a rate of 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. By combining all this information, we have concluded that our universe is approximately 13.8 billion years old. This is how we determine the age of the universe. But there are many objections. The first objection is the Hubble tension. Different measurement methods yield different expansion rate values. For instance, one method gives a value of 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which is 9% greater than the value we obtain when we measure an imprint from the early universe, such as the distance between different maximal density peaks. This method gives us an earlier value of 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. However, what if this method isn't universally correct? What if the late time methods we use, such as the cosmic distance ladder, which yields 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec, are instead the correct ones? One might think that a faster expansion implies a younger universe. However, there are degeneracies between various parameters in terms of what makes up the universe and how fast the universe is expanding. If the expansion rate is 9% greater, we slightly increase the amount of dark energy by a few percent, at the expense of dark matter, which decreases by about the same amount. The age of the universe might shift a bit, perhaps down to 13.6 billion years, but not by much. The age parameter is largely invariant to these changes. The second objection is the cosmic starting line. Should we start the cosmic clock at 380,000 years, when the cosmic microwave background we observe was emitted? Or should we choose another milestone instead of the nominal t equals zero corresponding to the moment of the Big Bang? This question is really interesting because it makes us think about how far back in time we can go with the information we have. But there are two important reasons why we shouldn't just stop at the cosmic microwave background. One. Echoes from the past, we have two sets of signals that reach even further back in time. The abundance of light elements from Big Bang nucleosynthesis, which occurred just three to four minutes after the hot Big Bang, and the signals from the cosmic neutrino background, which imprinted themselves into the CMB, and the large-scale structure of the universe just one second after the hot Big Bang. 2. A matter of scale. When we count back billions of years, say 13.8 billion years, the uncertainty lies in the last digit, the 8 in 13.8 billion. A discrepancy of 380,000 years, or even a few minutes or seconds, is insignificant compared to the vast scale of 13.8 billion years. Indeed, there are many milestones we can reach by extrapolating back in time. The first galaxy clusters, the first galaxies, the first stars, the first neutral atoms, the first stable atomic nuclei, the first protons and neutrons, the first massive particles, and so on. But if we trace steps back to the earliest possible point, we find, to three significant figures at least, that the hot Big Bang began 13.8 billion years ago. The third objection is the dawn of inflation. Indeed, the hot Big Bang might not mark the true beginning of the universe. The concept of cosmic inflation, a period of rapid expansion that preceded the hot Big Bang, challenges this notion. Rewinding 13.8 billion years takes us back to the hot Big Bang, but not to the true start. It takes us back to an assumption we once thought was valid, but now know it isn't. 
we could trace our expanding and cooling universe back to a state of arbitrarily hot temperatures, arbitrarily high densities, and a single point where our current 92 billion light year diameter universe was all contracted down. This idea, that the hot Big Bang started with a singularity, was widely accepted from the 1920s, when the Big Bang theory was first conceived, until the 1970s. But then, we began to notice peculiar properties that didn't align with the idea of extrapolating the hot Big Bang to those arbitrarily hot, dense, energetic, and small states. Imagine the universe as a sheet. If it's flat, it means the expansion rate, that is, how fast it's stretching, and the total amount of matter and energy are perfectly balanced. This is possible in the Big Bang theory, but it's not a guaranteed outcome. We've noticed that different parts of the universe, which haven't had a chance to interact, have the same properties, such as temperature and density. This is surprising because, according to the Big Bang theory, they shouldn't have been able to communicate or exchange information. We haven't found any remnants of a super hot state of the universe. If the universe had reached extremely high temperatures, we would expect to find some high energy leftovers. To explain these observations, scientists propose the idea of inflation. This theory suggests that before the hot Big Bang, the universe went through a phase of rapid expansion called inflation. This inflation could explain why the universe appears flat as it stretched everything out, why distant regions are similar as they were once close together but got separated during inflation, and why we don't find high-energy relics as the universe didn't get ultra-hot but was reheated to a lower temperature after inflation. The inflation theory is unique because it makes predictions that are different from the Big Bang theory. These predictions have been confirmed by observations and include scale invariant spectrum of density fluctuations. This means that the distribution of matter in the universe is almost the same at all scales, with a slight variation, or tilt. Adiabatic fluctuations. The changes in the universe happened at a constant heat, not at a constant density. Fluctuations larger than cosmic horizon. There are variations in the universe that are larger than the observable universe. Maximum temperature below Planck scale. The highest temperature the universe reached, as indicated by the cosmic microwave background, was lower than the highest theoretically possible energy. We only know the minimum duration of inflation, not the maximum. The universe must have doubled in size at least a few hundred times during inflation. If each doubling took about 10 to the power of negative 35 seconds, then inflation must have lasted at least 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds. But it could have lasted much longer, even trillions of years, or more. However, it probably didn't last forever. It's likely that there was a state before inflation, possibly a singular state, a point of infinite density. We don't know what caused inflation to start, or whether our current laws of physics apply to that time. When we talk about the age of the universe, we're referring to the part we can observe, which is about 13.8 billion years old. This includes the time since the hot Big Bang and the brief period of inflation that left observable imprints on our universe. There was likely more inflation and something else before that, but we don't know what they were like or how long they lasted. Remember, these are our current understandings based on the data we have. As we gather more data and develop our theories, our understanding of the universe will continue to evolve. As Carl Sagan once said, the cosmos is within us. We are made of star stuff. We are a way for the universe to know itself.